Greetings everyone, welcome to e, e Learning Hub. So for this video, I'll be going through and explaining the solutions for questions related to different types of lamps. All right, so let's begin. So this is question 11 from the 2011 past paper. Part A, it says, explain briefly the following terms. Part one of A, illumination. Illumination is defined as the energy of light striking a surface of specific unit area per unit time. So that's it for part one of A. For part two, luminous intensity. This is the amount of light emitted by a light source in a particular direction. All right, so that's it for part two of A. Part B, it says state two advantages of incandescent lamps over gas-filled lamps. One, incandescent lamps are cheaper. Two, incandescent lamps have instant start while the gas-filled lamps take some time for them to turn on. Part C, it says explain why lamps in domestic electrical installations are connected in parallel. One, lamps are connected in parallel because a constant voltage is provided. Two, if one lamp is damaged, it will not affect the other lamps in the circuit. Part D, it says figure seven shows a switch start fluorescent with glow type starter. Part one of D, it says explain briefly the function of the choke in the above circuit. The choke is using fluorescent lamps to serve as an impedance limiting the current flow through the lamp. Part two, it says state the function of C1 and C2 in the above circuit. C1, this is used to improve the power factor, which was reduced due to the presence of the bolus. All right, so this is C1 here. For C2, so the function of C2 is to provide a brief surge of electricity to start the ionization process. So this is C2 here. All right, so let's move on to part E. It says a customer requires two lamps to be controlled from two different locations along a corridor. Design a schematic diagram to satisfy the customer. All right, so this is the schematic diagram for two-point control of two lamps. So here we have lamp one, lamp two, and we have the two switches connected across a source. All right, so that's it for part E, part F, it says, name two instruments you can use to test the circuit for part E above before it is energized. So the two instruments are continuity tester and ohmmeter. All right, so that's it for this question. Now let's move on to the next question. So this is question 11 from the 2006 past people. It says, figure seven shows the schematic for a lead log circuit for operating a pair of fluorescent lamps. All right, so here is figure seven, part A. It says, explain briefly the function of the choke in the operation of electric discharge lamps. So the choke is used to provide an impedance limiting the current through the lamp. Part B. Briefly explain the term stroboscopic effect with reference to electric discharge lighting in industrial settings. The stroboscopic effect refers to the visual phenomenon that occurs when a rapidly flashing light, such as an electric discharge lamp in industrial setting appears to be either motionless or moving slowly, even though it is actually flashing at a high frequency. Part C, it says explain briefly the function of capacitor C1 and capacitor C2 in the operation of the lead log fluorescent lamp circuit. C1 is used to modify the circuit characteristics, such as to increase the starting voltage of the lamp. So C2, the function of C2 is to provide a brief surge of electricity to start the ionization process. Part D, it says, name two gases used in the construction of electric discharge lamps. 
So the two guesses are Nian and Argon. Point E, it says give two inductive components used in the construction of electric discharge lamps. So the two components are ballast and igniters. Part F, it says list two major advantages of using fluorescent lamps in industrial installation. One, fluorescent lamps have a longer lifespan than filament lamps. Two, they are more energy efficient. All right, so that's it for this question.